Okay, welcome to the video on the Krebs cycle. This is for uh, bio students, not bio X students. If you're bio X, go look at the other video. Um, this is for the Krebs cycle for bio students. Uh, the Krebs cycle uh, follows after glycolysis. I'm gonna start off, um, and it'll help you too if you have a sheet of paper, take notes on it just like in the other videos. I'm gonna start off by drawing a really large mitochondria. on my sheet of paper, that long oval shape of the mitochondria. Let me just zoom out so you can see what I'm doing here. And remember the mitochondria has got a folded inner membrane. Now I'm not uh, really exaggerating these folds, they're much more exaggerated than this in reality, but I need lots of room in the middle. So normally these folds would be much bigger going right in, really increasing the surface area. Remember, this is the outer membrane. This is the inner membrane. We have this intermembrane space here. And these folds are called cristae. Let me just zoom in a little. And the liquid in the middle, like the cytosol of the mitochondria, is called the matrix. The matrix is where most of the reactions of the Krebs cycle are going to happen, and it's the place you need to focus on um, for this video. It's important to remember, though, that before the uh, Krebs cycle can happen, we need the very first step in respiration, which took place outside, and that was glycolysis. Glycolysis took place in the cytoplasm, and it converted glucose into two molecules of something called pyruvate. I'm going to be struggling to fit that in. There we go, pyruvate. Now this process produced a few different things. One thing it produced, and I'm going to do a little dotted line going up here to show it, was two molecules of 2NADH. Remember, NADH is a high energy electron carrier. It's carrying these high energy electrons and it's going to carry them ultimately to the electron transport chain. One molecule of glucose was split into two molecules, you can I just put a little two times there, it's kind of hard to read, of pyruvate. As well as that, this produced, very usefully, two molecules of ATP. Now, remember that this is effectively the uh, reactions of anaerobic respiration. When anaerobic respiration happens, it doesn't enter the mitochondria, everything takes place in the cytoplasm and fermentation is also going to happen. But we're assuming now that this is aerobic respiration. Remember that means with oxygen. So the mitochondria will be used. And the pyruvate, when oxygen is present, moves into the matrix of the mitochondria. When it's inside, it undergoes something called the link reaction. I'm just going to draw this arrow actually a little bit longer to provide enough room for the link reaction. Just label it. Oops. Can't really see my C there. Link reaction. Okay, in the link reaction, a number of different things happen. You don't need to know the details of them but you do need to know a little bit about them. One is that carbon dioxide is produced. And the carbon dioxide, it's one molecule per pyruvate, which gives us two overall, is released from the mitochondria. So the two pyruvates that went in produce, first of all, two carbon dioxide. One per pyruvate. Back up to the link reaction. 
other things that happen here, a molecule of, two molecules of NADH, so, yeah, just sorry, two molecules of NAD plus are converted into two molecules of NADH. So, let's keep score. So far, we've got two ATPs made, two carbon dioxides, two NADHs, which came from glycolysis, but now the link reaction is making another two NADHs, these high energy electron carriers. There is another molecule that's important here that comes in and joins in. This is called CoA. And that reacts to form something like, something called acetyl. CoA. You're not gonna get a lot of exam questions on this. This is a high level thing, a part of your understanding. But if you get this, this is kind of what's gonna differentiate those top students. They're going to be able to remember that the CoA comes in and this helps to transport that pyruvate and converts it into something called acetyl CoA. Part of this molecule then will enter the Krebs cycle. The rest of it goes back around to regenerate the CoA. It's just like a little kind of link step, little transport um, protein going on there. Okay, so now we enter the Krebs cycle. I'll just zoom out a little so that you can see where I'm working here. The Krebs cycle, like the Calvin cycle, is a continuous series of reactions that go round and round. So I'm going to do a big circle here. Remember this is taking place in the matrix of the mitochondria. This is the Krebs cycle. Named after the guy who discovered it. It's sometimes also called the citric acid cycle because one of the molecules involved in this um, cycle is citric acid. Okay, so you don't need to know the different compounds in Keb Krebs cycle. Just know that it's a series of enzyme catalyzed reactions going round and round and round. You do, however, need to know what it produces. First up, for every two molecules of pyruvate that came in to the mitochondria, the Krebs cycle will convert six NAD pluses into six NADHs. This is a whole load more high energy electron carriers. There's also another electron carrier, a bit of an odd one out, that happens just here. It's called FADH2. Um, and uh, two molecules of this, so it starts off as FAD plus, become two molecules of FADH2. Now this is a bit of an unusual electron carrier. It ha works just like NADH, and remember from photosynthesis, NADPH, P being from photosynthesis. It works like those, it carries high energy electrons. Don't worry too much about why it uses a different one, just know that there is this other one that happens here too. The Krebs cycle also does um, two more things. It produces two molecules of ATP from two molecules of ADP and PI. And it produces, it releases four molecules of carbon dioxide. And I'm gonna do my dotted line over here because the carbon dioxide leaves the mitochondria. Like so. So let's just recap what we've got so far. Glycolysis, which was studied in the other video, produced two molecules of pyruvate. 
they go into the mitochondria, where in the link reaction, two molecules of NADH are made and two molecules of carbon dioxide are released, one per pyruvate. A molecule called acetyl-CoA helps to take the pyruvate into the Krebs cycle, where a series of reactions take place, producing two different types of high-energy electron carriers, some more ATP, and some more carbon dioxide. Notice that we now have a total of six carbon dioxides. Six carbon dioxides, well remember that comes, that forms part of our balanced equation for respiration. We started off with one molecule of glucose, we've produced six molecules of carbon dioxide. We haven't yet produced the water or used the oxygen. Those are going to come later on in the electron transport chain, the last of our mini topics. Just a couple of uh, notes on what's going to happen then next. The electron transport chain happens in the mitochondrial uh, inner membrane. So I'm just going to write electron transport chain. Because that's where the next video uh, is going to focus. And that video is going to focus on what happens to these high energy electron carriers. The ATPs that were produced beforehand, those can just go off and be used now. So far, one molecule of glucose has produced four ATPs, but we've still got between 32 and 34 molecules more of ATP to make to get all the energy we can out of the glucose. The key to this is going to be these high energy electron carriers that we made. And if we add up our totals by bringing all of the electron carriers over here, we have two molecules of FADH2. And if we add this one and the two that we, this, these six here, the two that we made over here. and the two that we made in glycolysis, just gonna add this dotted line to this one. We've got a total of six, seven, eight, nine, ten NADHs. 10 ADHs, two FADH2s. These high energy electron carriers that we have produced are going to take their energy to the electron transport chain and make all the extra energy that we need. All of that extra ATP is going to come from this final step. You can think about Krebs cycle as being a bit like the opposite of the Calvin cycle because it produces all this carbon dioxide. Remember the Calvin cycle in photosynthesis was taking in carbon dioxide. A common mistake that students make is they mix up Krebs cycle and the Calvin cycle. Krebs cycle is in respiration. It's what happens in mitochondria. Calvin cycle was photosynthesis. Okay, really critical that you understand the difference between those two. So that's the Krebs cycle. The really important reactions that help to prepare these high energy electron carriers and release the CO2 from respiration. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, as always, make sure you come along to tutoring. Take care.